when you take off the mask, you are free. And that's what God wants. I'm free. Yeah. And so next week we're going to talk about freedom. So let's look at now, let's look at how to remove the mask. This, this, this thing that keeps us from being totally open with God. Not so much you don't share all your street business, you don't have to. But totally open with God. What prevents us to be honest with God? And, and, and because God can see through the mask anyway, but what prevents us to be honest with God and how we can remove this dishonesty? Well, we talked about Joseph for the last several months, I think, and today we're going to see him as he uh, meets his brothers and has an audience with, with them, uh, 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 and he is angry with them for what they had done to him, selling him in, in slavery, and now 21 uh, years later, uh, he, that anger is still there. And so when they come together, and the, the ten brothers, of course Benjamin is not with them at this time, and he sees Reuben, he sees uh, Levi, and Simeon, and Jude, and Judah, and, and, and Glad, and Asher, and Naphtali, and all of them. And he's upset. And when he, he makes a statement to them, he said, I'm going to put nine of you in jail, and one of you I'm going to let go back. And, and if you bring your brother back, Benjamin, if he, if, if, if he is alive, then I'll let you go. And he's upset with them, because for the last nine years, he's been wearing the mask of an Egyptian and the mask of anger and unforgiveness and a slice of meanness. And before he makes that decision to send one back, he decides to throw him in jail, all of them. And he threw him in jail. And that's where we pick up our scripture, Genesis 42, verse 17. So he put them all together in prison, but for three days. He may have intended to put them in jail longer. He didn't have to put them in jail at all. He could have let this, the, the uh, one go back in the night in jail, but he put them all in jail. And then he put them in jail for three days. And after three days, something happens to him. He says this, Now Joseph said to them on the third day, Do this and live. In other words, do what I tell you, and I'm letting you out of jail, because for I fear God. He didn't say he had sympathy for them, and he cared about them. He said, I fear God. And so that was the beginning of his removal of his mask. That he, for uh, 20 some years, he had sort of maybe walked away from God. He was 17 year, years of age when he had his dream, uh, 17, uh, 20 some years ago. And it's been about nine years since he's been Prime Minister of Egypt. And so at this particular time, maybe for nine years, he had not had any closeness with God. He had not acknowledged God. He wasn't an ungodly man. He was a godly man, but he was just out of fellowship with God. And somewhere along the line, he decided to get back in fellowship with God. After three days of having his brothers in prison, God showed up again, or he showed up to God again. And so you remove your mask by getting back into fellowship with God. He said, I fear God. That word fear means to reverence or respect or to honor, to get back to God. If you want to remove your mask this morning, uh, it's not the person sitting next to you you need to get it back in fellowship with. It's God. And, and it's not your wife or your husband or your, or your minister or, 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 or your friend. It's God. And when you get in fellowship with God, then the other will work. But you got to get in fellowship with God first. God is... is is immutable. He does not change. We all have relationships with God already. Everybody who is born again, you are God's child. That doesn't change. Joseph was God's child. That hadn't changed. He was a grand, great grandson of Abraham, the grandson of Isaac. The, uh, his father's name was Jacob. So he was God's child. No doubt about that. The relationship was constant, but the fellowship had been broken. God is always our father. And we are always his son. But sometimes 
as son, we don't act like his son. And we move away from him. But he's still acting like our father. And we are out of fellowship. The fatherhood hasn't changed. And so what we need to be reconciled and come back into fellowship. To act like the way we are. And so sometimes, you are all God's children. But the fellowship had changed. And so, to remove your mask, you've got to come back and fear God again, reverence God again. The prodigal son had, had, had a very similar case. Uh, he, uh, we read that in the book of Luke. When God said, uh, talking about the son and the father, that the father had two sons and one son, the youngest son took his money and went away from home and lived a, a very uh, riotous life. He had not never stopped becoming the father's son. He had just stopped behaving like the father's son. And one day the Bible says in, in Luke chapter 15, verse 17, when he came to his senses, Amen. he didn't become a new son. He was always a son. He just got back in fellowship. When he came to his senses, uh, the Bible says he did what? He took off his mask. Now that's my Bible. He took off his mask. And he said, I go to my father and say to him, I have sinned. So he come back into fellowship. And so if you want to take off your mask this morning, just say, God, I want to come back into fellowship with you. I know you're my child, you're, you're my father, and sometimes I don't act like you're my father, sometimes I don't behave like you're my father, sometimes I don't even think like you're my father, but you are, and I'm your son. And so I want to reestablish fellowship. The Bible tells us in 1 John 1, 6, if we say that we have fellowship with him and we continue to wear the mask, we do what? We lied if we weren't a man. So you got to establish fellowship. So how do you establish fellowship then? Very simple. It's not nothing hard. You're already saved. So you're not trying to be born again. You're not trying to go back and, and have a new birth. You're already saved. That's they've been taken care of. So how do you reestablish fellowship? Look at uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. I don't have a scripture there, but it's chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins. He is faithful and just. He will forgive us. And he will do what? <coughs> Remove our mask and purify us for all our rights. And then you are back to being his son again. That's all it takes. So you got to establish fellowship. It's not that hard. How many of you have been out of step with God? Raise your hand. All of us. All you got to do to get back in fellowship, fellowship with God and back in step with God is to walk to his beat. God, the, right, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. God is counting the cadence and we are walking to his beat. Left, right, left, right. And sometimes we walk right, left when God's saying left, right. Then you got to get back in step. And once you do that, your mask will begin to come off. And you can take that mask off and then you will be uh, the way God wants you to be. You won't be hiding behind the mask. Next week we're going to talk about the joy of, of living without, living mask free. How many of you want to live mask free? Amen. You know, no, no more uh, uh, deceitfulness. The joy of living mask free. So fellowship, you remove your mask by getting back into fellowship. And all you got to do, if we can just raise your hand and bow your heads right now, if you would, just all of us, say, Lord, I have sinned. And I confess my sins. I know I'm your child. And sometimes I haven't behaved like your child. I haven't thought like your child. I haven't acted like your child. But right now, Lord, I ask you to forgive me and remove this mask. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God a hand. He's taking it off. Sometimes it's immediately. You know, Jesus said, if your eye offends you, do what? If your hand offends you, what? He doesn't say twist it off. He says cut it off. <laughs> but there are sometimes, habitually, we get caught up, and some masks are moved gradually, and some are moved immediately. In this case of Joseph, it took a while for him to completely take it off. But it was the beginning. The process has to begin. So, it's best to remove it immediately. Ask God to take it away now. You don't want to be weaned 
uh, because uh, sin is not like milk. When you wean from milk, you sort of pull back from you sort of weaning from sin, you sort of pull it into it. You know, it gets you going again. So you want to be weaned, but you want God to remove it right now. So tell God to just cut it off right now. Just tell him, cut it off. Cut the strings off. My mask. Secondly, then, if you want God to remove your mask, not only you gotta, we got to get back in fellowship with him, secondly, we, we studied the life of Judah before. Judah was Joseph's fourth oldest brother. His name means praise, by the way. And he was the one who had started out being a scoundrel. He had what? So he had, he said, let's sell Joseph to slavery. He's the one who had, who had, uh, uh, committed hypocrisy and, 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 and had sex with a prostitute, was, thought it was a prostitute, but really his daughter-in-law, and he had done a lot of uh, distasteful things. But now he is growing, he's learning, he's doing better. And, and so when Israel says to him, you guys go back and get some more grain because we run out of food. And Reuben says, well, you know, uh, we can't go unless Benjamin goes. And Israel says, well, you're not going to take Benjamin. And Reuben says, you can kill my two sons if I don't bring him back, which it makes sense right there. Uh, and then Israel said, no, I'm not going to send Benjamin. And then the, the food uh, had completely run out. Israel says, you've got to go get some more food. Israel, of course, is Jacob. And Judah, his son, says to his father, this is where we pick up the story. Genesis chapter 43, verse 8. Judah said to his father, send the lad with who? Me. me. Now he got nine other brothers. <coughs> and all of them want to go. But Judah said, no, send him with me. And we will arise and go. But then he goes on to say what? I myself will be sure to play him. I will guarantee it. I'm not going to depend on these nine. I will guarantee it. You see, sometimes God wants us to do things without depending on other folk. How many Christians, I'll go there and let them go, you know. How many of you going to stand up and shout? You're not going to do it to everybody in your pew. Look at your pew. I'll do it if they do it. God wants you to be able to do it by yourself. Don't look around and see what they're going to do. Yeah, they got their own problems. <laughs> so anyway, so Judas says, no, I'll do it. Then he goes on to say, you may hold who responsible? Me responsible for him. And if I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then Judah said, let me bear the shame before you forever. He was willing to take responsibility. He was willing to take his position in life. He was willing to uh, develop a ministry. And so if you want to take off your mask, you got to be responsible. you got to be responsible. You've got to be... How many of you are good people, great people? Ask that last week. Are you raise your hand? And how many of you know the Lord? You're born in Christ. You are at New Life Bible Church. You're getting a, 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 a extensive t teaching. you got good fellowship. The, you got the best members in the world, the best people in the world. you got the best children church in the world, the best teenage minister in the world. And you're getting the best in the world right here. And so you've got to be responsible. You've got to take the lead. The Bible tells us, and it's talking to you now, just new life, folks, nobody else. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 13. What does the Bible say to you? You are the head, not the tail. And we got to take our position as leaders. Everybody in here has a, a talent, and everybody is a 10 in some area. I don't know what area you're a 10 in, but everybody's a 10 in some area. Something you can do better than anybody else they can do. And you should develop that into a ministry in this church. I always say this at the 101 uh, class. I say, if you got a ministry and it's something that God puts on your heart, do it. Do it. And so, 
God expects us to take the lead because we are the head and not the tail. Uh, God expects us to be responsible. And all when you take off your mask of fear, mask of doubt, and say, I gotta take my position. You are called what? Christians. You are not called some other uh, name. You're not Buddhist and you're not Hindu. You're a Christian. Christ died for you. You have the blood of Christ in you. You see what? And he's in you. And great is he that sent you in the home. And you should be able to do anything. Amen. How many of you need to develop a ministry of some sort? Or belong to a ministry? Take the lead in the children's church or Sunday school or whatever. Uh, you're, not, you're not the tail. And it's sad that some Christians come to church and go back home and never in part of a ministry. Never get locked into something. Greeters ministry or the guest ministry or something. Just come and leave. Come and leave. And you come with your mask and you leave with your mask. Uh, Saul, when he was uh, named king, and Saul was a good looking man, the Bible says he was tall, good looking, broad shoulders. And, and he was uh, smart, tall, good looking, broad shoulders, smart. That's all like anybody you know. <laughs> uh, look at your husband, brother, uh, sister, uh, Paxton. It's all like anybody you know. <laughs> she better say yes. <laughs> But he was, he was a, 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 a natural born leader. And they were having this coronation. And they said the, the music was playing, the people were standing there, and he was a natural born leader. He had been anointed by God. And they looked around and they didn't, see, they didn't know where he was. And so the people asked God, Lord, this is what we read from 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 22. So they inquired, Father of the Lord, where is Saul? And the Lord said, yes, uh, he has hidden himself behind, among the baggage, with his mask still on. When you don't take your leave and become a part of a ministry of church, you are wearing a mask. God wants you to take your mask off and take your position. I don't know what position you are, but everybody's a 10 in some area. I don't know. But in some area, you can do something. And you should find your ministry within the church and, 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 and begin to work at it. This is what the Bible says in Luke chapter 12, verse 28. And we all are this gifted. I mean, we have the, uh, when I look at the kids in this church and the great kids we have, I know we've got some super parents. And the Bible says this. For everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted much, much more would be asked. God expects more out of you as a new lifer than some other church. Why? Because God wouldn't send you if he didn't expect more out of you. If he didn't want as much out of you, he'd send you someplace else. Right. So God expects more. So you got to take your position. I want everybody, Miss Phillips, where is Miss Phillips? Stand up, Miss Phillips. Miss Phillips has put together uh, uh, a track team. Yeah. She's only been her, her and brother Phillips has only been in this church about five or six months, a little bit. But she has put together a track team. I looked at it online. Uh, we we're already registered with the AAU and USA. Go to go to the AAU website. You see New Life Blaze. Yeah. She did it herself. She said, this is what I want to contribute. Talk to me. She had a meeting with myself and the first lady, and she said, I want to contribute. I want to take off my mask. I've been sitting around for three weeks. I want to do something. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Phil. <laughs> Didn't wait around to be asked questions of, I can't do it. She did it on her own. She put together the whole pack. I looked at the web page the other day, and I read the, all the insurance and all the liability, and I said, wow, my goodness. She hasn't been sitting around calling high schools, calling school board members. She's not even prepared me. <laughs> Had the principal from school calling us. What is this new life blaze? 
And that's what I'm talking about. Use your talent. And she took off her mask. Yeah, took off her mask. Thirdly, uh, Joseph now goes back to his brothers. Benjamin's there now. And, and he sort of sits with uh, his brothers. And he begins to create a dialogue. And, and, and I started taking some things out. He, they have a conversation. And let's read Genesis chapter 43, verse 27. They are back now. They are back. And Benjamin is with them. And he asked them how they were, of course. They said, we we're fine, you know, a long trip back, you know, that kind of stuff. We came back. But he does, they don't know that he's Joseph, and he's, but he's engaged in a conversation. And then, then Joseph asked him, how's your, your age father uh, that you told me about? Is he still living? And they said, yeah, our father's servant is still alive. He's doing well. You know, he's back at home and, 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 and all that. And then Benjamin was sitting there, who, whom Joseph hadn't seen, his poor brother, <laughs> And he said, uh, as he looked about and saw his brother Benjamin, his mother's son, he asked, is this your youngest brother? Yeah, this is the one, you know, the one that uh, you told me about. And Joseph looked at his youngest brother and said, God be gracious to you, my son. Okay. Deeply moved in the sight of the bro brother and the conversation that they were having, even though they didn't know he was his brother, but he was moved by the conversation that they could, and the and the uh, sight, and the, and the sort of the he missed that camaraderie. And what did Joseph do? He hurried out of the room, looked for a place to do what? Yeah, because he 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 didn't want them to see him in love. He so so he removed his mask. So he wanted he wanted to cry. He wanted to weep. He wanted to hug. But he had his mask on, and he couldn't do that. He could only pretend. And so he went for a place so he could take his mask off so he could be himself. And so if you want to take your mask off, you got to open the lines of communication with God and others, and you got to establish some kind of rapport. You got to establish some kind of rapport with people. You got to be able to talk. The Bible, not the Bible doesn't say this, but uh, 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 the, uh, the, uh, what, what, what writes No Man is Island? What, what is that verse? Uh, anyways, No Man is an Island. Oh, I forgot. You're a man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a 10 in math, right? There. Yeah, not ready to. Okay. No Man is an Island. And we've got to establish a conversation. We, people, we got to talk to each other. Remember when God created Adam and Eve? And he created the, the horses and the giraffes and the donkeys and the monkeys. <laughs> and he created the, the dogs and the cats. But he hadn't created Eve yet. And Adam was there with all the animals and he was just talking. He could talk all he want, want, wanted to, but they couldn't talk back. So he was lonely. And so God said, well, I'll make you help me. Someone who could talk back. So he created Eve. And Adam had not spoken since. <laughs> so guys, when you when, when your wife is talking, you know where you got it from. You just shut up though. You don't say a word. Well you got it from Adam, because when uh, but he, he used to talk. That's why a guy would go to the, get, get the dog house and he'd talk to the cat. <laughs> you, ever, you ever seen a guy in the yard talking to his dog? <laughs> he know he's in trouble. <laughs> but if we want to, open, we got to be honest. This is what the Bible says about talking. Listen to what it says in Ephesians chapter 5, 19 in terms of church folk. we got to talk to each other. Speak to one another with what? Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart. So we got to be able to talk together. And we don't talk together as church folk, then we're going to keep our mass on. We got to be able to relate and talk, not only in church, but in our homes as, as couples. <coughs> There's a four letter word in marriage, it's called talk. You got to talk. You got to open the lines of communication. You got to talk and you got to listen. You got to listen and you got to talk. And as long as you don't, 
talk, you keep your mask on. And, 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 and nobody will see the real you, because that's how people, humans communicate. We don't do sign language unless you're deaf or mute. But we talk, we communicate, we use God, 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 the humans are the only animals that have a voice box. And so uh, we, God wants us to talk to each other. And, and you've got to establish some type of rapport. You've got to be honest and be open. You've got to talk. And you can remove your mask through conversation. That's why the Bible tells us in Isaiah 118, come, let us reason together. Talk about it. Talk it out. When there's a problem within a uh, relationship, talk it out. The Bible tells us in Colossians 3.10, do not lie to each other since you have taken off your mask with deceitfulness and have put on a new life in Christ. Just talk about it. And the first person you talk to is God. Remember Cain and Abel? Everybody remember that story of Cain and Abel? Who killed who? Killed who? Cain. Cain killed Abel, didn't he? And, and God said to Cain, God came to Cain and, and, and asked Cain a question because God still was in the forgiving business. And so God wanted to give Cain a chance. And God came to Cain, Genesis 4, 9, and God said, uh, to Cain, hoping to get some kind of dialogue with Cain so he could ask for forgiveness. And God said, where's your brother? Now, Cain had already killed Abel, hadn't he? And what did Cain say? I don't know. <laughs> what kind of conversation is that? What's wrong, nothing? I mean, you got to talk. How you feel? I feel fine. How you think I feel? <laughs> you know <laughs> That kind of stuff will keep this thing on. And then uh, Cain, went, Cain got on and he said, God, to, to God, this is what Cain said. What am I, my brother's keeper? And, and so we've got to establish rapport. We've got to learn how to talk. If you want to take your mask off in church or at home or any place there, learn how to talk. Learn how to talk. Learn how to talk to each other. Okay. Three things. This is the last one. The first one was you remove your mask by getting back into what? <laughs> and also by being responsible. And by opening the lines of communication with God and others, establishing rapport. Okay, the last one then, I think, is, it, 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 is what is unique to this church, or maybe to a lot of churches too, but this is, this is sort of going with the first one. Uh, so Joseph now, he's getting ready to take off his mask. He's gone through his whole nine years and playing games with his brothers and all that kind of stuff. And now he's getting ready to take off his mask. He started with fearing God, but now it seems like uh, he's trusting them again. And, and they've talked about it. They've had, they've had a conversation. He feels responsible because he knows he's a leader. And so he's getting ready to take off his mask. And what does he do? The Bible says this in Genesis 45, verse 1. Then Joseph could no longer control himself. He could no longer keep his mask on. He couldn't keep it on any longer. And so uh, he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence. And everybody left, all the Egyptians, all the waiters left. And there was no one there with Joseph when he met known to his brother when he took off his mask, but his brothers. That's the only people who said his brothers. You shouldn't, you don't have to remove your mask in front of everybody in the world. I mean, Facebook and Twitter should not see your mask. <laughs> if, if you, you should keep it within the circle of people that you trust. You know, that, 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 that you have a relationship with. That's why I believe that being connected with a small group ministry is just so essential.
tells me I'm a child of God. Amen. Even though what I tell myself sometimes, I'm still a child of God. Amen. Even when somebody tells me something, I'm still a child of God. Even when I feel bad and I fall on my face, I'm still a child of God. Amen. Because positionally, God sees me as holy. 